Hey guys, we're back. I'm finally going to do the three reports for the tournament we had back in December of the magical year of 2014. We had a tournament where we were finally going to let the end times list be a part of it just to test them out. Uh, I think we were also we were testing some scenarios out for maybe for Brawler Bash and you might have recognized some of the stuff you'll see um, that happened in Brawler Bash. Uh, so in my first game, I'm going up against Kane Elves. I'm going to be playing uh, a guy who I hadn't seen since 6th edition. He had quit for like years. He came back in. So he like basically bought a brand new army and just put it together. So it was mostly unpainted. But um, I've seen him paint in the past. So I know once he gets it painted, it'll look really great. Basically, the only scenario for this one is going to be there's like these little ejector tokens, which are dice in the middle of the table. I think they're worth 50 victory points each, maybe 100. Um, basically, if you landed on one, you could take it. And if you had it at the end of the game, you got 50 victory points. Okay, since this has been a very, very long time since I had this tournament, and the army lists for this have, have disappeared over the last few months, this is the best I can remember what these lists are. I can pretty much almost 100% stay with my army list still. Is. Anybody else's, though, is mostly guesswork based on my pictures because I can't remember, <laughs> really remember. This is pretty much my standard list. You know, I have the troll, I have the troll horde, the savage biggin horde, the great shame in general, the standard discipline, um, just like a little bunker and the war machines and manglers. Alright, and this is going to be my opponent's list. And like I said, he was playing cane elves. And if, if you've never played against End Times list, and you've never especially played against the cane elves, you will be unprepared for the amount of, of, of combo stuff that they can bring into this. Stuff is a nice word because pretty much everybody agrees that Dark Elves and High Elves are the pretty much top of the books. And so when you can combine their stuff, when you have a banner royal dragon with dark elf magic, and when you can have witch elves fighting in three ranks, and <laughs> you can have, you know, white lines re-rolling ones to wound, and this is, this is just crazy. Um, so this is going to be tough. Uh, I hate fighting elves more than anything. I'm hoping my trolls and my savage orcs and, um, can take care of business, and I'm pretty much going to have to be defensive, because I, I'm, I know I outrange him. And again, you know, playing defensive with Orc and the Goblins, the crazy world. So I don't have a picture of the deployment, but I do have, um, starting with Vanguards, and um, he's Vanguard and his, I'm pretty sure he had two units of Dark Riders, a unit of maybe Glade Riders or Reaver Knights, I can't remember what the third one was, they were the half-painted one, and he Vanguarded, I think they were the, his Brolocks up there, was it Warlocks? And I'm I'm Vern Guard my Wolf Riders here. And also you can tell he's deployed most of his stuff behind that building. And I think he hasn't played editions in so long. He's used to L's castling and stuff. I I don't know. <laughs> Here's the rest of the Vanguards. I have Vanguard my level one shaman up. I'm hoping to get some charge on that to where I can counter charge my trolls. And you'll see this model, this unpainted model I have. I really wanted to bring this to Brawler Bash. But when we played this, I didn't realize that so much was going to happen, you know, health-wise for me, where I was just about to start painting the stuff I had left to paint for Roller Bash right when I had to go to the hospital. So I had to um, bring the models I had, so I had to switch um, Shaman's models, so I didn't actually get to bring this. This is a, a Game Zone Goblin Shaman on a Wolf, which is a really cool model. Hopefully I can use it in the future. And this is the last look at the vanguards, and you can see, I keep in this picture in here because you can see a better look at my deployment. Uh, when he started casting up in that corner, I started putting my stuff there, and I'm hopefully I could swing my trolls around and make it like a little, turn it to where, like if you had a meeting, meeting engagement deployment, so that I can keep it from running away from me. Because that's what you worry about with elves, you're worrying about their main blocks being much faster than you, but if he's cornered up there, then he have to fight me. Which, I mean, I guess he doesn't really care about, because with all the re-rolls the elves get these days, that I guess they don't care about fighting you anymore. Okay, so he wins first turn, and you'll see he charges his chariot at my wolf. I just take that, because I'll trade the wolf shaman for a chariot, because any day, because I have a pretty much easy counter charge of my trolls. And then I can hopefully destroy that chariot, and then reform to face where all, where all the build and everything, and I'll already have... You know, the troll's going straight towards there, where hopefully he can't get away from me. And he's moved the rest of his, like, fast cavalry coming around there, going up to the hill and everything. 
Okay, this is the rest of his turn. You just already see my shaman died to his his chariot. That was no doubt about that. Also, um, he lands, I think one of his dark running units onto a mangler. They get destroyed. And he charged, I want to see the Sisters of Twilight charge that my old father that I held. They got beat, and I held so that I could counter charge with my pump wagon and, and stuff like that. And here's another look where you can see a little bit more clear here, where I'm going to have a counter charge onto those warlocks with my pump wagon. Uh, I have my big boss over there too, where I can either charge on the warlocks or the Sisters of Twilight. And if you see that base, kind of empty base, that's his Frost Phoenix and the Medusas beside it. Like I said, he hadn't had a chance to summon everything because he's, he's been out of the hobby for a long, long time. I haven't seen him in years and years. I don't think I've seen him since 2006. So it's my turn one. I don't charge my trolls at the chariot. I decide to risk it with my mangler. You can see my mangler goes right over that chariot and destroys it. Instead, I just wheel my complete center around so that he's pushed off to the corner now. He has he really can't maneuver his infantry away from me. He has to sit there or, or come to me. And I'm hoping, you know, these are my best two best two units in the orc book, Savage Biggins and Troll Horde. Hopefully they can take care of White Lions and uh, Witches with a, a Cauldron. Also, my Pump Wagon goes into the Brolocks and my Big Boss. I put that as Sisters of Twilight. I, I didn't think they were as, as tough as the Warlocks, but they do a wound to me on the stand and shoot alone already. So he's already in trouble. So my shooting... I get a big, big um, plus for me right off the start of the bat. Rock Lava has a direct hit on his cauldron. I don't think I wound the cauldron. I think it makes his ward save, but I kill his battle standard right off the bat. You couldn't really tell because he hadn't had a chance to paint and glue the battle standard up there yet. But right off the bat, he's lost his battle standard. The Doom Drivers scatter a lot. One of them scatters onto these Dark Riders here. I kill three of those. One scatters onto the White Lines. I let it stay there, and I kill, like, was it two or three White Lines? In the magic phase, I realized that Foot of Gork is going to do almost nothing for me. You know, Banner World Dragon, he's got 2 plus ward on his White Lions. And I think he had some kind of magic resistance where he had like a 3 or 4 plus ward against magic on his Witch Elves. Because I think they have, don't they have a 6 up ward to start with? And it goes up with magic resistance too. I think it was 4 plus. But anyway, Foot of Gork is almost, you know, useless. Going to be useless to me this game. And um, in combat. Pump Wagon only kills one Rolock, gets destroyed, and my big boss dies before it can even strike. So, Candel's turn two, and you can see he's already charged my Rock Lava, destroyed it with his sisters, and they're going to reform. So, all this fast cast coming here, none of that's a danger to my combat blocks, but I need to keep them from getting behind me so they can destroy my war machines. So, I'll need to reform those savages better to keep him from able to get around them. I, so far, I really think Magic has not had or like a big imp impact on this game. And he really has very little shooting other than like the crossbows from his um, Dark Riders and the, the bows from his sisters. And here's a picture of this side of the table. His hider's coming right here where it can go into the flank of my trolls. I'm not too worried about that. Um, the Frost Phoenix takes the token and flies back some. And his two Dark Riders are still alive um, from that unit are coming around here. It looks like they're trying to do an end round to get to my war machines. And I'm pretty sure those half half painted um, fast cap up there are glade riders and not reaver knights. I'm not exactly sure though. So my turn two, I do have my line reformed here so he cannot get around with his sisters to my war machines. I pull back a chariot to protect um, those doom divers from his um, dark riders. And basically, I'm still we're like a standoff between our two. Um, infantry blocks now. And here's a little bit better picture of it. Also you'll note that my remaining rock lava has destroyed his hydra. I'm dead rock, well the rock lava, I think the rock lava just got destroyed, killed the battle standard. But my rock lava have killed a battle standard and hydra so far so they're doing really good. The doom drivers I think they plink off two or three witch elves. And again, full of gork is basically useless. I think I, I hand of gork to my bunker to get a little, little bit away from um, the Hydra because I was worried you know, I hadn't destroyed it yet because that was magic before your shooting so I was worried about the Hydra maybe swinging around and getting to my bunker. So Canal's turn three he's moved all his fast cab back behind his lines his Medusa, Medusa if you can see on the hill there it's moved up I think it's hoping I'll feel frenzy or animosity and 
be forced to charge with my uh, savages, then he can counter charge in the flank with his white lines. I, if I remember right, the Medusa is also a frenzied, so if I'd pass those tests, it's most assuredly going to be forced to charge me. Now, um, there's some kind of magic he does, something where it kills a couple of my trolls here. And you'll also notice that base there, he fights his Frost Phoenix behind my lines. I wasn't even thinking about that. Oh. Now, if I remember right, he also fails to charge with his Welsh Shells and Cauldron at my trolls. And now he's an easy charge distance for my trolls to hit him. Because he's gotten just past enough that past that building where I can go in there and charge. I think I only needed like a six to make it. And a picture from behind my lines. That Frost Phoenix is very scary going against my bunker. I think that card there is the whatever magical spell he put on my trolls to kill a couple of them. And those Dark Riders charged my Rock Goblin and destroyed it easily. Now it's my turn three. <laughs> Look at those trolls. You probably guessed when I said I only needed a six what was going to happen. I failed the charge on those Witch Elves with my trolls. So there's another there stuck in no man's land. I can get double charged next turn if he wants to because it's easily in range of those white lines coming in as well as the Witch Elves. I charge my chariot into the Frost Phoenix. I have to do something. Uh, uh, I think I swift for... No, I, I think actually I thought didn't switch for form him. I think I handed Gorked again in my bunker so that it would be facing the Frost Phoenix if it busts through and at least it'd be in my front and not my flank. <laughs> I did those trolls. Those trolls. Uh. Now, Jewel actually noticed I do a couple wounds to that Frost Phoenix. My chariot is still there. It does not destroy my chariot because my BSB and General are right behind it. My chariot's going to hold so he's not going to be able to charge me, my bunker his turn. So I have a little bit of leeway because he should destroy that chariot. And it shouldn't be in a situation where the chariot is able to break and he can run into my, um, overrun into my, will pursue into my bunker. I think the chariot was down to maybe one wound. So he should destroy that chariot. And I've held him off for a turn, which is the, basically the most I could hope for for that chariot. And look how dangerously close those trolls were to the witch elves. Oh, oh. KNL is turn four, and you can start to see this. He does a number on my trolls. Now that's where I find out what three ranks of witch elves <laughs> fighting can do, where they get to reroll their hits, reroll ones to wound, poison attacks, frenzy. Oh, I, th I think I do a couple wounds to the cauldron. I kill like four witch elves, but it's not enough. I break, but at least I get away. At least I get away. <laughs> I know. Unfortunately, when I took this picture. It was before we realized we had to do the combat with the Medusa and my savages because the Medusa was forced to charge my savages. And I'm going to destroy that Medusa and I don't have to overrun anything because he charged me. So guess what those savages are going to do? They're going to combat reform and go right into the flank of that the witch elf unit. Okay, this is the top of the fifth turn. And the reason I was explaining what I did because I things got so hectic that I didn't have a picture of my, of my turn. But look at all the savages I lose when I charge in the flank of his witch elves. I lost that combat. So he was able to easily combat reform so now I'm facing his front of his witch elves, what's left of them. I lost that combat. <laughs> Cause like we have the rolling where the cauldron can fight across the gap. So I was able to fight in the combat. <laughs> but still a savage orc big and horde in the flank should not get beat like that. So I get beat but I hold. Now his white lines are coming into the flank of my savages. I rally my trolls in my turn. I used Hand of Gork to get my bunker out of the way of that Frost Phoenix. This is just this was still just crazy. I lost that combat. Oh. So now the Witch Elves They've taken out my trolls, made them run. My savages in the flank couldn't do anything. This is just insane. So when you come to the end of his turn, my lines have completely crumbled. You know, like you probably guessed, he destroyed those savages. They had to flee in the direction of my trolls because the white line was a bigger unit. You know, he's only got three witch elves left. But, uh, my lines have crumbled. The trolls have the, the Frost Phoenix is blocking the trolls from being able to go in there easily. I, mean, I should kill the Frost Phoenix, but uh, it's tough right now. It's tough right now. So this is the bottom of my turn five. I've charged this Frost Phoenix. You can see I've killed it. 
Uh, before that, my Doom Diver takes his Witch Elves down to just one Witch Elf left in that unit. But we're going to run out of time after five turns. We're not going to get to do turn six. So he has one Witch Elf left in that unit. So I'm not going to be able to fight. I mean, most likely, I destroy them, but then his White Lines are most likely to kill my Trolls, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, it's always possible that I don't destroy the Cauldron, and he can't get his White Lines around to charge my Trolls. But anyway, um, this is where it's going to end things with one Witch Elf. And we, in this tournament, we're, the local tournaments up to this point, we're not giving you half points for um, units like we all our GTs are. And this is the last um, local tournament where I was doing that. So that I get zero points for this Witch Elf unit, even though he's got one Witch Elf left. I get zero points for killing his Battle Standard because it's on a mount. And, you know, the, we're doing main rule book rolls for v victory points. So this Cauldron, you know, has only two or three wounds left. The Battle Standard is dead. There's only one Witch Elf. And I get no points for that at all. No points for that at all. Okay, so when we add it all up, it's a victory for the Canales, 12 to 8. If I could have got half points for the Witch Elves, and the points for the battle standard would have been a 10-10 draw in my favor, actually. So, um, uh, how can savages go into the flank of El witch elves and lose? I, I don't know. I had my best two units go to those witch elves, and I cannot take them out. I, I, I just don't know what else to do. It just, they had so much so much going for them. That the synergy they can have with all three elf lists mixed together like this, I don't know what to do. I think I played really good. I think I had a great plan. I think everything worked the way I wanted it to do. Uh, I took out his monsters. I had the infantry lined up where I could fight them, and they couldn't run away. And I just just couldn't win the combats. It's just all those rerolls. There's well, you can you can't have to do anything about it. You know when you get to reroll hits and ones to wound, and your poison attacks, and you're fighting in three ranks, it's tough to deal with. But this is my first. Um, and so far only battling this KNLs and I'm saying I hope ninth edition can't come fast stuff where they don't exist anymore but on the hand you don't know if everything the rumors are true that'll be else from now on will just be all three elves mixed together where you have to fight this all the time and you know but if it's a skirmish game who's going to be playing this yeah <laughs> but anyway anyway um, this was a real fun game I felt like I played really well I felt like I had everything my plan went perfectly that way I wanted it to, except when it came to the combats when my trolls dying and my savages. My well, trolls didn't die, but my trolls losing and then my savages dying. I don't think I could have played better. I, I think everything went exactly the way I wanted it to, but I just couldn't win the game. Anyway, my next game is going to be against Undead Legions, and that would be also my first time playing against them. So I hope I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Um, feel free to subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.